we were nearly out of, out of here to go home and have some lunch. But anyway, and get the lad back to Adelaide because he's it's his anniversary today. How good's that? Bloody lucky lad. He's in for a treat tonight, I hope. Anyway, we found a little swarm in a, in a bush down the back here because we'd run out of little swarm boxes. We should have had some more nuke boxes sitting around, but they've all got filled it up. So we've got one laying out on itself. So apologies to the daughter-in-law, but I'm going to have to keep the cameraman for another hour or two. So hope you're gracious. Take one for the team. When you're first starting out in this bloody mad beekeeping rig, <laughs> gig, <laughs> you wonder why I've got all this stuff laying around the place. And then you find out that even when you've got your shit together, you've still got not enough. So anyway, <laughs> we didn't quite come prepared to be swarm catching at the minute, but still, we are, so it is what it is. And you've got to take the opportunities when they present themselves, otherwise, the moment's moved on, and it's like, you know, bloody hell, I wish I'd bought shares in Google, but I didn't. <laughs> Listen to the excitement. <laughs> right oh, and I just happened to find them over here, sitting under a bush. Or oh, hanging on a bush. Shh, we'll sneak up on them. It's not a real big swarm, but what the hell. We're not going to lose any of them, we can help it. So we're just going to trim up our bush a little bit, so we can cut off the bit we want and pick up that nice little nest and drop them in our box. That's my plan anyway. And being that it looks like they've established themselves here a bit, we better leave our new box where it is, where this nest is. I think they've been here for a little while, they've made a bit of a wax cluster. So, okay, we'll just... I couldn't find a pair of one-handed snips, so <laughs> this isn't really convenient, but still. So we'll just cut it off back here. And then we'll just pick it up. No, we won't, because <laughs> it's hooked to the ground. We've got a fair bit of it anyway, and we'll just chuck her in. Ready? There we go, now, so we'll get them in there, and then we're just going to put that like that, trim a bit more of this crap out the way, and then we'll sit our little entrance right where they were, so even if we haven't got, I think we got her because she would have been in the middle, then all the field bees are going to come back, and they've already orientated to this spot, and so hopefully when they all come back they'll go, oh, well, bugger me, we don't need to find a home, we've got one. Well, it looks like they're trying to go in there, so that's a good start. Maybe we'll give them a little ladder to climb up. What do you reckon? How crazy would that be? Uh, what have I got here? Let's give them a little ladder to climb up. Well, they don't have to work so hard. Because they're all worn out after hanging around like this. Ah, shit. <laughs> that was epic fail. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there's too much crap on the ground. Well, this is just, this is where they're orientated because they can still smell the queen scent. The queen scent. So we're just going to sit that back, basically where they're going to be congregating. So when the field bees come back, they won't get too freaked out. And hopefully it looks like they're running up into the box. These girls are trying to figure out where the hell their boss went. And even if she's not in there, because there's enough in there, and hopefully she'll walk up in there herself anyway, and we'll come back in a, I don't know, come back tomorrow and put them somewhere else. Uh, well, hell, they might as well stay here for a little bit. There's plenty of food here anyway. 
they're not gonna do any harm so easy as that there you go catch yourself a pot of bees Spring's definitely sprung, the girls are all over the shop. We've got this little group here, I don't know whether there's two swarms going together or two separate ones, but we're going to sweep them all in the same box and they'll work it out when we get them home. This swarm catching box gets a fair workout this time of year, it's crazy! <laughs> so hopefully they haven't found a hole already, but you can see, you can see this is basically the swarm it goes like this, and they're all circling and carrying on. And then they're all clustering on here. These are nice little golden ones too. These look like these look like proper bees. This might be someone's proper bees. Cool. Let's rock that. <laughs> I reckon we'll get this lot here, and then we'll get that lot. I don't know whether they're the same or different, but <laughs> God, what a worry. Okay. Say a prayer for me out there in Internet Land. hell do you think you know in here? <laughs> oh, goodness me. Well, they're not even a hole in this tree, you crap pots. <laughs> just don't, don't, and hope. Now, hopefully the queen's actually in the box. My goodness me, ticks. What are you doing? There's not even enough, this is not even a hole here again. They're seriously demented. <laughs> Anyway, she's obviously in there because look at them go. Wait. No. Oh, you got one in the suit. Oh. One in there. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh! Okay, I know. Ow! No! That's my ear, you little shit! Ow, A bit of a hectic year this spring. I've got swarms going everywhere. These actually look a little bit professional, so I don't know. They're just as angry and they stung me on the ear, so I don't think it matters whether they're professional or nuts when they're doing this. But anyway, we'll just go and let them into the box. So, um, well, into my swarm box, and then we'll take them and put them in a different box. I reckon they're coming this side, so we might just let them in here. <laughs> Anyway, see how they're nicely clustering in here? This is a very fresh little swarm, so they're still a bit bonkers at the minute. <laughs> they're like, we probably should have waited for a minute, but then, you know, I get a little bit excited when the swarm turns up. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm just blowing on them because they hate our breath. So I'm just blowing them in that direction. Because I haven't got the smoker with me, of course, I'm not that organised at the minute. Well, we were just going home for lunch. Got the emergency call, so here we are. Waste not, what not, bee season. Duck season, rabbit season. And bee season at the minute. <laughs> you funny little fellas. Funny little ladies, honestly. I wonder if the queen bee has a super duper pheromone that she can let out. Like if she finds somewhere to land and she wants everybody to congregate to her, I wonder if she squirts out a bit of extra duty pheromone or something. Because you can see where they were up here, they're all going back to that site, but they all, but the other ones can smell her in there, so it's interesting, isn't it? I guess it'd be a little bit like she's got a little um, little bell she's ringing, ding -ling 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 -ling. or perhaps it's like that wicked ass perfume that your that your wife or your girlfriend wears, so you know she's in the room. So this is the um, different tree, same yard, that we were at the other day. Different bees too, these guys are really golden. The ones the other day were black and angry, they're gonna have to get a new queen. But, um, so I really don't know, maybe this is like, but the blooming tree hasn't even got a hole anyway, so perhaps this is the, anyway. When the young lad rang me up, I thought, oh my goodness, you know, sometimes you get a phone call at the re thing and there's like six bees that are left behind and they go, ooh, there's a swap, but this is like, anyway, 
So perhaps don't ignore the phone call regardless, as long as it's not too far out of your way. I had a phone call from some folks that had a swarm in Williamstown the other day, which is about a four hour drive away. And I thought, well shit, that's an eight hour round trip. That might be a bit enthusiastic, so they'll probably get someone a bit closer. <laughs> oh, ah, there is actually a lot there. Oops. Okay, next time they get here, the bush bee man's giving them an open hand. They can have a freaking proper opening. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Which is definitely in there though, because check them out there. So would it, I would assume then, by that observation, and the fact that they were swarming on the outside, when they arrive and that big bunch is sitting out there, the queen hasn't run in the hole straight away. She said, go in there and clean that shit up before I get in there, I reckon. Otherwise she would have run straight in out of the way. So, so as long as you're not too late, and they're clustered on the outside, you probably get the queen. Just thought I'd knock on the door and see if anybody's home. Hello! Avon calling! Any honey in there? You just get them out of there, <laughs> little sods. Whoa! We better not make a proper entrance. I tell you what though, what we might do is we might go and. I found one the other day because I had to get a swarm off for the council and I found one in a tree that's in the park. We might take a bit of footage of that to see what happens when they actually make themselves a nest because apparently they've been there for a couple of years so but that's a while away so it's different bees they're being very obedient they're going in there very nicely they look very orderly they are look at that that's very cool i wonder if i should design some way to actually have a, just a one entrance so they can just go in one way and can't get back out again but it seems to work quite effective this idea anyway so if I just, if I did make a one-way entrance, what would happen, I suppose? Because perhaps they, the ones that do fly out, they fly out and run around in circles going, Help! Help! We're in a bloody box! Come see what the Queen's doing! She's hanging from the roof! It's not too bad in here! Come in the box! Come in the box! It's all good! The bush bee man's come to save us! Well, and that's been yet another successful swarm rescue. Take the little ladies home and ceremoniously tip them in the new home. Time to go home to your new home. These people don't like you. But me, I like you. They're quite heavy. <laughs> so this, of course, is what they're trying to achieve find a tree with a decent hole that they can live in. Apparently these ladies have been here for a little while. I am not cutting down the tree to get them out of there. That's just not happening. That's, I, the council dude asked me that and I said, I think that's above my pay grade. I'm gonna leave them in there. So apparently they've been here and they haven't hurt anybody. So we used to come here and play hockey and we didn't know they were in there. So it's all good. That was before I was a beekeeping, well, interested in beekeeping. So keep your eye out. If you're going past a gum tree or a tree with a holler, you never know, you might see some ladies. Anyway, these look like nice little golden Italian bees, so that's good. Hopefully they're not as angry as the last lot. <laughs> oh, this rescue and bees business is getting a bit full on this spring. <laughs> last year I didn't have anywhere near this many call outs. So maybe people are getting popular. Everybody's starting to talk about us, John. Yeah, ring that bush bee man up, he's got nothing else to do. <laughs> Bloody hell. Now you know what it is? People are actually starting to get a conscious, con consciously knowing that the bees are very important to our environment. So they don't want to ring the pest controller, they're ringing me, so, which is good. But if you're in America watching this, please don't ring me. Well, you never know, you could ring me and pay for my airplane ticket and we'll, we'll fly to your place and grab a swarm of bees. I don't think I'm allowed to bring them home, but hell, that'd be fun. <laughs> Give it a little tap, like the little Fonzarelli bump. <laughs> That's just to make sure they're angry. Now it's to bump them off the top. Otherwise you end up with a great big lump. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that, would you? That's a bloody bee soup. My goodness. <laughs> My golly gosh.
I'm going to try something different and put the lid up the other way and then they can go in easy. Or maybe they would bugger off easy. <laughs> That's where it's around this side they're going. Well, so far so good. Poor old Mrs. Bilsh Bee man. She's got a bloody backyard full of wild swarms. She's like, what the hell are you doing to my backyard, you madman? So we just got them here because I don't want them with the other really good bees. Although she's got two hives in her backyard that she's that I'm helping her look after. So if I get them sick, I'll be in all sorts of shit, won't I? <laughs> so I've played this swarm catching game for a little while now. And I reckon it's a good idea to have at least three frames in your box. So as that when the ladies tip in there, the queen actually runs up into the frames and she'll actually feel comfortable and safe and have somewhere to hide. And um, it seems to stop them from absconding so easily. But with swarm catching, there's no guarantees. <laughs> but so far, we haven't had any run away. So hopefully this won't be the one because I like these girls. They're kind of pretty. <laughs> these doors are a little bit crappy. Just give it a little bit of an opening so they can figure out what they're doing. Something else to remember when you bring home your swarm, if you happen to be silly enough to catch a swarm, they're all still in crazy swarming mode at the moment, so they've all rushed up and they're sitting on the actual lid here. So, you want to be really careful because it's just as likely the queen's sitting in a bunch on top of the lid. So don't bloody take the lid and sit it on the ground. It's a bit like after you transport them, be careful where the queen is because she can run up and feel safe. So they're all up, sitting up on the lid, so you just be really careful that she's not up there because that's the last thing you want to do. Well, I reckon that's not too bad. Sometimes they end up forming a real thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to just tap her a little bit. You ready? Tapping is not necessarily the thing that bees like, but the last thing you want to do is lose the queen after all this hard work. Then what I do is I like to slide these in. So, trying not to kill anybody. Because that sort of defeats the entire project. Yeah, so just take your time. Gently put the frames in. You don't want to crush anybody because that's a bit sad and a bit pointless. They might not have technically cost you any money, but you still don't want to kill any of them. Well, that's a bit bloody silly then. But if you have a look here, you see what I was talking about. See these three frames here we had in the box and the girls have all sort of bunched there quite nicely and said, shit, this looks like somewhere we could make a home. They've also run up this wall, but this here is what we had in first. And you can see where they are. They've become a nice little bunch there. Except for the ones that run over this side, but that's sort of not what I'm trying to explain. <laughs> Ooh, so we just put our lid on, and then we'll just let the little girls settle down. And away they go. I usually like to leave a little bit of a gap at the top for a start until they figure out what's going on because they're all sort of although they've gone in here really nicely so but generally they're like a big ball flying around and they want to come in on the top and so I usually just leave a little gap at the top while they settled in and open the front up so that hopefully this is obviously where they're going to orientate to eventually and away we go easy as that 